Welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E-Church in Harvest, Alabama. We praise the Lord for this day. This is the day that the Lord has made and let us rejoice and be glad. And it is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. And as always, we believe that it is a day to praise the Lord. Glory. Let's get a Lord a hand clap of praise this morning as we get ready to study his word. The word of God this morning comes out of Acts. Acts chapter 9, um, we're going to be looking in particular at verses 10 through 20, uh, but we're going to cover the whole chapter of Acts chapter 9 a little bit because it's, it all ties in together. That's our background scripture. And the, and the lesson titles is we can deal with Paul and Ananias, and we're going to talk about them both. Um, and we can look at it from Paul's call to preach. Um, uh, one of the other titles that I like for this lesson is welcoming a welcoming grace. So, so we're going to, we're going to deal with some of all of that this morning. Uh, let us go now to the Lord in prayer. Dear heavenly father, we thank you and we praise you for all your blessings. Lord, we thank you that you woke us up this morning. You clothed us in our right minds and you gave us a reasonable portion of health and strength. We thank you dear heavenly father for a roof over our head clothes on our backs, food on our table, Lord, transportation to go where we need to go, dear Lord. But most importantly, out of all this stuff, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you most of all for being God and being God all by yourself. And we thank you for your darling son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins and who you raised from the dead that we might be saved. Thank you, Lord, for your darling son, Jesus, our Savior and our Lord. And Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit who rests, rules, and abides in us and leads and guides us. And, 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 and he, he, he just abides in us as we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So Lord, we ask you this day as we get ready to, to teach your word and get ready to receive the teaching of your word, help us, the Heavenly Father, anoint us afresh with your Holy Spirit that we might be filled with your Holy Spirit, God. Fill us now, Lord. Anoint us afresh like never before. Give us what to say and how to say it, the Heavenly Father. And then give the listeners an opening ear so that they might hear what thus says the Lord. Let us all, dear Heavenly Father, not just be hearers of your word, but doers of your word. Thank you, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over this technology. Plead the blood of Jesus over Facebook and the Internet and over the uh, conference call and the telephone lines, Lord. We plead your blood right now over every household. In the name of Jesus, every person, name, name by name and need by need, we plead your blood, Lord, over every community, over every church, over every city, over every county, every state, every country. We plead your blood, Lord, because there's power, wonder working power in the flesh and blood of the Lamb. For it is in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks. Amen. Amen and amen. Welcome again, everyone, to, to the God and Light Ministry. Our, our lesson today, as I said earlier, is Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, and, and we're going to start at verse 10. Acts chapter 9, verse 10. And uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to read it out of a new King James Version of the Bible, Acts chapter 8, starting at verse 10. And the new King James Version of the Bible reads, Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus called Ananias. And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias! And he said, Here am I, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight. Inquire at the house of Judas. For one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. 
and in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him so he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I've heard from many about this man. How much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he, and here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles kings and the children of Israel for I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Verse 17 and Ananias went his way and entered the house and laid his hands on him laid his hands on him he said brother Saul the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once. And he rose and was baptized. And then he received food. He was strengthened. Then sent, spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. Immediately, verse 20, he preached the, the Christ in the synagogue. For he is the son of God. Amen, amen, amen. What a wonderful, glorious lesson. What a wonderful and glorious text we're going to be looking at. Saul or Paul and Ananias. Oh, hallelujah. This text, this text is, is, is one of those uh, texts that, that everyone who is a Christian, everyone who claims to be a child of the living God, should, should look at this experience that Paul had on the road to Damascus. He, he was traveling with authority from the uh, high priest Caiaphas to capture and kill everyone who was called uh, by the way, those who were, those who were, calling on the name of Jesus, those that we call today Christians. Paul was a man who 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 his 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 Roman name is 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 uh, uh Paul and his and his um Hebrew name is Saul. His mother was a Hebrew and his and his father was a Roman and they got married and so Paul had both uh, 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 Roman citizenship and Jewish citizenship. And here he was, he was a man who had been raised up and taught the ways of the Jewish people and set under one of the greatest minds uh, in Jewish history, the, uh, the teacher Gamaliel, uh, the rabbi Gamaliel. And, and then Paul also became a Pharisee himself. And he was was now uh, 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 hell bent. Ain't no other way of saying it, of destroying everyone that was of the way, those that believed in Jesus Christ's death, 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 burial, and resurrection. And he had authority to do it. He was there when when Stephen was was being stoned, and Saul was there holding the coats. Of, of, of the men who threw stones and killed Stephen. And now he's traveling the road to Damascus with the other, some other uh, uh, of the, the, the Jewish 
uh, high priest uh, uh, security guards, if you will, and guards. And he's traveling, and God, the Lord Jesus, knocked him off of his horse, blinded him, and told him, don't you know it's hard to kick against the prick? Why are you persecuting my people? Why are you persecuting the ones that I have chosen? All the other people with Saul heard the voice, but they didn't see the vision. And they told them to, 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 to go and, and um, uh, um, to go. Paul, God, Paul, Paul was told by Jesus to go to a street called Straight and wait there until he gets further instructions. And so now we pick up the text in chapter 9, verse 10. When God spoke to Paul or Saul during this time, telling him what was going or going to happen, he also talked to another. And so what I like about this text is that it, it shows that, that, that God had arranged this thing way before it occurred. God had put it together a long time ago. And, and that goes back to, to Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to, to, to not harm you. Plans to not give you an evil. Plans to prosper you and give you an expected end. That's how God operates. God has a plan and a purpose for each of our lives. So as we look at this text, as we look at this text, our golden, our, our key verse for this 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 lesson is that 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 uh, uh, verse nineteen and twenty. Then was Paul. Uh, then was Paul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus, and straight away he preached Christ in the synagogue that he is the Son of God. So ultimately, Paul was called. To preach God's word. And so uh, our key concept for this lesson is that God will use Saul or any of us to tell others about Jesus. Our, our keys for kids, the message to the children is Saul started off trying to hurt everyone who believed in Jesus. Two, but God had a different plan for Saul's life. And Saul worked for Jesus and helped grow the church. Uh, when we look at this lesson, we're going to look at it in, in, in two parts, but, but I'm going to have some other points up in there. The first one is a disturbing vision, and, and, and the second part is the dramatic uh, uh, visit. But what I want to talk about today is, is, is I want to talk about it from, from the standpoint of grace. Look, Paul was a persecutor of the church, but he became a preacher. He persecuted the church, but he became a preacher. Oh, hallelujah. That's, that's just so awesome. And, and, and now Ananias had to deal with, with this persecutor of the church, somebody that he himself was scared of, and God gave him this disturbing vision. Oh, hallelujah. That is God's grace. His grace is at work. His amazing grace is at work. And we, we will see in this story God's grace on display in one of the most candid ways in all scripture. Hallelujah. So, so, so Ananias had this disturbing vision, but he had to have the grace to believe what was going on. Let, let's look at verse, start at verse 10. Let's start at verse 10. I'm reading now the New Living Translation. Let's start at verse 10 in the New Living Translation. It says, Now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. 
the Lord spoke to him in a vision, calling Ananias. Yes, Lord, he replied. Then the Lord said, go over to the street, that straight street to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying to me right now. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Can you imagine God telling you to go to see somebody that you know wants to kill you? that you know wants to persecute you. God is working on Ananias to, to get him to believe what he wants to do with this young man named Saul. Do you have the grace to believe when God shows up in a vision? Do you have the grace to believe that someone can change from being a persecutor to being a preacher? Do you have that kind of a, a, a relationship with God that if he told you to go to somebody that then did you so wrong and you got to go and show them grace and mercy, are you ready to do that? Oh, hallelujah. And so, here it is. The Lord tells him to go to the street called straight. Oh, man. Go to the street called straight and you will go to this house of Judas and you will ask for a man named Saul from Tarsus. He is praying right now. I remember in my early days of, 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 of theology and school and, and people would say, well, when did Paul get saved? Did he get saved uh, after he was baptized later on in verse 9? Did he get saved when he regained his sight? Did he get saved on the Damascus road? I'm like, all I know is God saved him. And here in this text, he is praying to God right now. And that is the word God said to Ananias. And, and he's praying right now, meaning that God is hearing his prayer. God hears sinners prayers. That's how we become saved. But God wasn't calling him a sinner right now. God was saying, this is my son. This is my child. I'm hearing his prayer. Oh, I want to encourage somebody today. If you are a child of God, if you believed in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you are saved and your prayers are heard by God. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 12 says, so he says, he said, God says, say, I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying his hands on him so that he can see again. God said in this vision that he was giving Ananias, Ananias, I want you to understand I've already arranged this. I've already fixed it that he will hear and hear your name and he knows that you're coming to lay hands on him so that he can see. Oh, Ananias, do you have the grace to believe the vision God has placed on you? Do you have the grace? Is there any Ananiases out there? Are you ready to accept what God is telling you to do. Are there any Ananiases out there that can hear a word from God and believe it? Do you have the grace to believe? It doesn't matter what the circumstances were before. Yes, Paul, Saul is a persecutor. Yes, he might be trying, this might be a trick, but can you believe 
when God tells you to go and do something. And so now we're at verse 13 of, 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 of Acts chapter 9. Or ver yeah, yeah, verse 13. Ananias says this, but Lord, Ananias explained, I've heard many people talk about this terrible thing this man has done to the believers in Jerusalem. And he has authority by the leading priest, by the chief priest, by the high priest to arrest everyone who calls upon your name. Ananias protested. He protested. He, he told God, look, uh, uh, God, no, no, no. This, God, don't you know? Don't, don't know. Haven't you figured this out? This, this boy here is a killer. He's a persecutor. We oftentimes, when God speaks to us, whether it's through a preacher, whether it's through the word of God, whether it's through a vision, when he speaks to us, we try to give God a but. But Lord, wait a minute. No. Doesn't work. Your protesting, your, your concern, God has already taken care of those things. The question still becomes, do you have the grace to believe? Do you have the grace to believe? Listen, verse 15, but the Lord said, go. For Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to the kings as, as well as to the people of Israel. And, and I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. God heard every word that Ananias said. But God had already decided that Saul was his chosen vessel and he would give the message, the good news of Jesus Christ to Gentiles, to kings as well as the people of Israel. God got a plan for, for Saul. God has a plan and Ananias is part of that plan to bring it to pass. And at the same time, he says, not only is Saul going to teach and preach my word all over the world, but he's going to suffer a whole lot of stuff. And, and, and I like that text in verse 16 because it paints a balance. It, 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 God, God is showing us a balance. Yes, we will do great works for God. But there are also going to be times where we're going to suffer. This, this call into the ministry, this call and to being a child of the king is not just a bed of roses and we fly on a magic carpet all the way up into heaven. Sometimes we got to go through some things. Sometimes we're going to go through some suffering, some persecution ourselves because there are folks that don't like what we do for the Lord especially the devil himself. So they're going to lie on you. They're going to talk about you, call you everything but a child of God. But long as you know that God got you, you're going to be all right. Oh, hallelujah. Because you're suffering for my for God's name's sake. And he tells us that, that when we suffer for his name's sake, blessed are we. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So when you're going through stuff, he just told me to stop parenthetically for just a minute. When you're going through stuff, whether it's sickness, whether it's an illness, whether it's a, a mental, a spiritual persecution, people mistreating you, don't, don't think God has just thrown you away. Just hold on to his unchanging hand. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. And realize in a time of trouble, 
God is a very present help, and he has you under the shadow of his wings. Oh, hallelujah. That was for somebody on the line today that, that, that's going through something that, that, that think, well, I ain't heard from God. God is right there with you, holding your hand right now, no matter what you're going through. And so, Ananias had to have the grace to believe. Listen to verse 17. So Ananias went and found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, has sent me so that you may get your sight back and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, now I'm, I'm going to go back to the New King James Version of the Bible because the New King James Version says something so wonderful. Uh, uh, no, no, no. He, he says it earlier uh, up in verse... E, um, what am I looking at? New King James verse says in verse 10, here am I, Lord. Yes, Lord. He, he had a yes in his spirit. That's what I'm trying to get to. Ananias had the grace to believe. And he had a yes in his spirit. Do you have a yes in your spirit? Do you, do you believe God? Can you say yes, Lord? I'll go. Yes, Lord, I'll do it. Even though I'm, 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 I'm a, I'm, I got some fear, I got some anxiety about the situation you're sending me into, God, but I'm going to go anyhow. And he went and he laid hands on Paul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, has sent me so that you will get your sight back and be filled with the Holy Spirit. The scales that had blinded Paul on the road to Damascus now fell off. He was no longer blind. He received his sight. Oh, hallelujah. And he was filled with the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, if I had time to deal with deep theology, folks like, how do you get filled with the Holy Spirit? Well, right here we see the laying on the hands. But, but we know that all you have to do is pray. Because the word of God tells us, ask, seek, and knock. And, and if, if you ask God, he will give you the Holy Spirit. When you're saved, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you receive the Holy Spirit. But if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that you'll be able to do the work that he has for you to do, all you have to do is ask. And some of us don't have it because we have not asked. Or we've asked amiss. All you have to do is say, Lord, fill me. As we were getting ready for this lesson, I asked the Lord today and not pray. Fill us with the Holy Spirit, God. Give us the power to teach and preach your word. Give us the power to hear your word, God. That's the, and the Spirit is right here with us right now, filling us with God's word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so, Ananias had the grace to believe. Now, Paul needs the grace to change. Listen to verses 19 and 18 and 19. Instantly, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptized. And afterwards, he ate some food and regained his strength. And Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus for a few days. God changed Saul's plans. 
but he also changed Ananias' plans. I'm sure, I'm sure Ananias did not know he was going to encounter a changed Paul. He was looking for a Paul that that a Saul that was that was gonna persecute him. Ananias probably was like, Lord, please let me get out of this. No, I don't want to go do this. I don't want to go do this. But but God said, go do it. And he said yes to God. And he greeted Saul and welcomed him into the church. So not only did Saul's plans change, but Not only did Ananias' plans change, but Saul's plans changed too. Ananias laid hands on him, and he was healed. Not only was he healed, he regained his sight. And then he got up and was baptized. Oh, hallelujah. Woo! Ooh, the Holy Spirit just said, just, I just, just, when I think about that, it thinks, takes me back to that song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was blind, but now I see. Oh, hallelujah. I was lost, and then he said, but I was blind, but now I see. Oh, that's amazing grace. God has grace that can change us. And he can change us in an instant. We have to accept God's grace. And when we accept God's grace, he'll change us. He changed Ananias to be able to go to see Paul. Changed his attitude. Changed his perspective. Then he changed Saul, changed his attitude, changed his perspective. Have you been changed? <laughs> Has God's grace changed you? Yes, I know I've been changed. The angels up in heaven have, have signed my name. I know I've been changed. Have you been changed? You, you may not have an experience like a Damascus Road experience like Paul had. You may not have an experience where you hear the voice of God like, like Saul did or Paul did or, or, or like Ananias did. But the question is, have you been changed? Have you heard the word of God that changed you? Oh, it's his amazing grace. That saved the wretch like me. Yes. If you accept his grace. You will be changed also. My final point. My final point. Not only did this. The, the grace to believe. And, and the grace to change. But finally. The grace to preach. And immediately verse 20 says. He began preaching about Jesus in the synagogue saying he is indeed the son of God. God's grace is poured out on Paul so that he might be an effective witness for Jesus Christ, spreading the gospel all over the land, being an ambassador for Jesus, being an instrument for Jesus, and we know that Paul went on to write the majority of the New Testament, establishing churches. He was a gospel globe trotter for Jesus, spreading the word everywhere he went. And that was because he received the grace of God to preach. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, God gives us his amazing grace so that we can share the same grace that saved you, the same grace that saved me, can save somebody else. And we have to preach to death the burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because his grace is amazing. His grace 
Oh, it's awesome. His grace is more than enough. Ananias received the grace. Saul received the grace. The question is, have you received God's amazing grace? I have a song I, I love. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. And from those waters he lifted me. Now safe am I. God has grace to lift you. Amazing grace. And there's someone that you know. Those of us who are saved that, that you might have given up on. Like Ananias had given up on Paul. But God has given you grace to speak a word to them or to continue to pray for them and lift them up. You need to have that kind of grace yourself. Because the same grace that saved you is the same grace that can save them. Let us end this lesson with a prayer. Dear Father, show us the things you want us to do. And help us to obey you to do whatever you tell us to do. Give us the grace to believe. The grace to change. The grace to preach your word. Thank you, God, for your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we close this recording, I'm going to give those an opportunity to that are on the line now listening to this recording lady to give your life to Christ that you might receive this grace. We pray the prayer of salvation. Please pray this prayer with me. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. If you prayed this prayer, you are now saved. You've been changed by grace. Continue to walk in God's grace. To my good friend, Pastor Conley, I don't know if you're at home or if you're still in the hospital, but whatever case, get well soon. Love you. Bless, grace, peace. And to the New Harvest Church over in Kenya, we send blessings to you. We're going to end this on Facebook and now go to the conference call. If you want to join us in our discussion on the conference call, the number is 910-218-0531. Be blessed, everybody, on Facebook.